Hey guys, so welcome back. Here we are working on a 93 year old radio. That we're going to see if we can get this thing to work. Uh, this is a Philco Model 20 from 1930. And it is not a super heterodyne radio. This is pre super heterodyne. This is a tuned radio frequency or a TRF type set. And what we did in the last episode is we went through and we checked out the power supply, we went through and checked all the, the coils to make sure they had continuity and that we were able to get voltage to them. We pulled all the tubes out and then uh, we tested to see if uh, how the components were, particularly around the uh, filter capacitors. We decided to replace all the filter capacitors, then we put the rectifier tube in and began to see what kind of voltages we could get out of this. Then we put the rest of the tubes in and did a successful first power up, meaning we put power to the system and saw that we were getting voltages throughout the circuit kind of where they needed to be. Uh, we were able to take our frequency generator at high output and tie it on here with the volume turned all the way up and we were barely able to hear a very weak signal going through here showing that the fundamentals of the circuit seem to be there. So that's where we are with this. Now let's get back into part two. Here we go. I've got a couple of peaks there. So I'm just swinging, the, swinging this back and forth. Okay, that right there is at 1249. It's just the way I have the tuning condenser set, but it's good to see I'm getting something through. There we go, that's good. Now I get the volume turned all the way up, and it drops off pretty quick. I'm not sure that our volume control is good. We'll just have to see. Before I do much wor more work on this, I want to go in and look at one of the uh, you know, the coupling capacitors. Let me turn this off. Okay, so one of the things that I needed to remind myself is the layout of these tubes, okay? So I've made myself some notes here, but you might be able to see it. So this is the first audio tube. The first RF tube is actually this tube, and then the second RF, and then the third RF that has the detector circuit in it. And then the circuit, the uh, signal then goes to this tube and then through here finds its way to the two audio output tubes. So that's kind of the flow. It, it comes in from the antenna, goes to here, 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 then here, then through here to here. So that's the flow. Okay, so on the uh, schematic, let me find a good picture so you see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and replace this coupling capacitor first. Because what that does is it couples the, the plate off of this third um, RF tube, which has got the detector circuit in it, and couples it to the grid of the first audio tube. And then, of course, this is the audio input transformer that feeds to both sides of the push-pull transform uh, output tubes here, 71As. I'm going to go in there and replace this capacitor here uh, before I do too much more work so I don't run the risk of damaging these other components from you know, overdriving this tube. So uh, I'm going to get on that and uh, I have found where this is located. So let me zoom you in. So that's this Bakelite box <laughs> that has one capacitor in it. All right. And all these other big light boxes here have capacitors. One of them's got a, should have a capacitor and a resistor in it. Actually, I think it's this one. Now, you may notice that this one has been the tab, like you have here, has actually been broken off here. So this tab, as you can't hardly see here, used to be here. So I don't know if the person who's doing restoration work on this purposefully cut that so that then this could bypass it rather than going through here. Um, I, I don't know. <coughs> I may try to see what I can do about that. But that's, that's getting ahead of myself first. So first thing I'm going to do is, is look at replacing this capacitor uh, that's located in this uh, Bakelite box here. And that's the coupling capacitor. So I'm going to get that done. Okay, power's off. Let's get this uh, coupling capacitor out of here. You can see it just has one capacitor in it, so you can see the two fine wires that come through these rivets and then are soldered up here. So what I'm going to do is cut those fine wires first. 
I need to make sure they're cut. Cut, and that one's cut. Okay. Now I've got myself an Allen wrench that's the right size to fit in that center hole. I do believe it'll fit. I think it'll fit. Okay. So what we need to do is heat up the uh, tar that's inside that can. I'm going to leave it attached to the uh, body. I'm just going to use a heat gun, heat it a little bit. And that got it. Okay. Yep, it's out of the way. All right. So now while it's still warm, let's try not to lose the star washers. There's one on top. There's probably one on the bottom as well. Let's see what I'm doing here. see the star washer that's down there. Probably gonna lose it here. Okay, I see it. There's one that's on the screw. Yeah, let me see if I can get the other one off before I lose it. It's kind of stuck in the housing. Okay. So now we turn this thing over. And you can see the capacitor sticking out. Oh, got it on my finger. Good. Push it out the rest of the way. And there we go. You get something to grab that with. Okay. And there's the capacitor out. There you can see it. Here's the two leads. And the capacitor. That's out. And then what we're left with is the shell. And I'll look inside to make sure it's relatively clean. I'll see if I can turn it over. You can see it. Let's see. You're going to go mobile here. Hold on. There we go. So there's the inside of the Bakelite box. Okay. All ready to put a new capacitor in. I'll get that going. I can do that, right? There we go. And then it goes. Two sides over. And we'll just swing this box back around. The uh, star washer is still on that side. Take our screw the star washer on it. And try not to strip it. Nice and snug. All right, I'm going to uh, get the solder sucker off and get the rest of the solder off of this, and then we'll finish dressing that up. Okay, so now I have the capacitor leads pulled out, wrapped around the back side of these straps, where there's a little notch there for them to wrap in after the old wire was removed, and now I'll just solder those in. And there we go. That looks good. Alright, so now that I've done that, I'm going to fire the unit back up, make sure it still works. 
and uh, then start working my way through the rest of the radio. 100 volts, half an amp. 110 volts, that's enough. Now we'll just try the signal, make sure the signal gets through, and then we'll just keep on trucking. I think it sounds stronger. How about that? All right. I'm going to keep going, doing that sort of thing. Uh, replace capacitors. I'm going to place these capa these resistors. I know they're bad. I'm probably going to rebuild what's going on here where somebody else had been working on it. And then uh, I'll bring you back when i got something to show you. Okay, so we got uh, capacitor number five done. Uh, I had to go ahead and con disconnect or cut this lead that was short in between them and also this resistor so I could wrangle this one out. But I've resoldered them back in so I can do my testing after each capacitor I replace and then I'll cut this one back out and so forth. Anyway, going to the, pre to the uh, voltage test power up. Coming up. Oh. 20 volts, 30 volts. 40 volts, still less than 200 milliamps, 50 volts, 60 volts, 70, 80 volts, getting conduction now, 90 volts, 100 volts, 110 volts, that's where I've been testing it. Okay, let's get uh, signal on to see if we're still getting it in. Oh. There we go. Yeah, so it's still getting through. I think I think it seems to be improving. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, instead of just using this generator lead, I'm going to uh, I've got a wire hanging from the ceiling. I'm going to connect it. Let me, uh, let me get a jumper on that and get that connected. Hang on a sec. Okay, and connect this up to the wire. I've just got a wire that kind of runs up to the ceiling and runs around around in here. Uh, not very long. Okay, let's see if we can get anything. That's my voltage. There's 115 volts, 600 milliamps. I'm, tur I'm turning the tuning condenser by hand. There's some kind of issue with the way the knob is connected. I have to look at. Well, we're picking up stations. That one's relatively close. So it makes sense that that one would come in pretty strong. Volume knob's working some, not full range. Okay, good. I'm going to uh, get on with the other, the other couple of capacitors I've got left, and then I'll get into the resistors. Excellent. Okay, so I've gone through and, and I've gotten this one done, and I think I've discovered a problem. So let me turn the volume down. So as you can hear, it's picking up, but it's it's very low, 
and I've had the volume control all the way up. And I've been kind of concerned maybe the volume control is bad. I don't know. Or it could be that the resistors are too high. Anyway, uh, I was going through and verifying uh, what is connected up here because I was looking at trying to figure out what somebody had done here and verifying what went where before I opened this thing up so I knew where the resistor, because this has both a resistor and a capacitor in it. So I'm just verifying which is which through here. And I've been checking the plate of the second RF tube, and I've been watching this throughout this repair, and it's low. It's very low. Okay. So I've been doing some checking, and I started tracing that high voltage, the D voltage, coming through, and it comes here, and then it goes here, and then it goes through this coil to go to the plate. Uh, unfortunately, when I go to the coil, the voltage goes away. I've got, I think, a bad coil here. So I'm going to do shut off the power. Okay, power's off. And what I'm going to do is, okay, so turn this way. You can see it a little better. So the coil's got four connections on it, two going in, two going out. The one that comes in comes from the, goes to the, uh, let me see if I got this right. We're talking about we're talking about this coil right here. One goes from the grid of the second to ground. So that's here's the ground and here's the grid. And this grid. Sorry, that goes to the tuning condenser. And then it comes here. The grid lead also comes to here and goes to the top of this, which goes to the uh, this third RF tube, and the other end goes to ground. This is the one that comes from the high voltage. We just checked that, and the other one is here, and this one back here is the one that goes back to the plate of the second RF. Okay, so that is here, right? Second RF. So I've been trying to see. There's nothing should be between. See, I was getting. What was it 250 volts here and then through here to here but here it stops I'm getting a couple of volts here so as I look at this let's look at the resistance from here to here so that's D going in I can just pick it up here that goes to this point and then down here if I go to resistance yeah, it's open. So if I come here and go to the plate up here, you can see that's connected. But then if I go to the other side, that coil, which is here, pick it up right here. That coil is open. You know, as you go through these things, you wonder why did somebody quit on this? And I'm wondering if maybe when they did this work here. Maybe they damaged this coil in here. I don't know. You can hear that it's it's picking up weakly and it's working, uh, but there's no voltage getting through really to the plate of that second RF tube. So I'm going to need to investigate this coil. I may need to take it out. So we're talking about this one here, and right here is I think where there's an open circuit. So I'm going to have to take that coil out, and we're going to have to check it. Okay, I got these leads disconnected. It wasn't it wasn't too hard. It was just kind of a little tedious to get in there and find your way into these little plates. There we go. Better view in here. All right, so I'm ready to take that. I had to disconnect this. I haven't serviced this yet, but uh, it's been done before by somebody. So anyway, I think I've got all the leads disconnected. This one kind of had me panic a little bit because it had it had a bitter end still with insulation on it. They had stripped it here and wrapped it and tucked that in, which is kind of strange. Anyway, um, I'm ready to pull. That's the grid cap line. I'm ready to pull this coil out. Let's see together what we got. Okay. A little short screw. Uh, let's see what we can see here. 
Okay. So the first thing to do, of course, is to look to see here where the line comes up and ties to the post. Make sure that's still there. And if it was okay, I'm going to suspect that's one of the first things because when someone was soldering out here, uh, maybe they damaged that line. So I'm going to go on that assumption that they didn't pull this out. Uh, so let me just check some continuities and we'll see. Okay, I think I found it. Um, I don't think there's any way you can see this. But just in case, I'm going to try. All right, so these two leads here are the ones that go to the ground. So this lead, I've had this on beep. So those are the ones that were on the left side that, well, go, it goes from the grid to the ground of the, uh, one of the coils. So this one here and this one here are the ones that we don't have continuity to. Okay, so what I'm done is I started really examining this, and what it is is it's this outer gold-looking coil, not the not the copper-looking one. It's this one. So you can see the lead comes up here, goes around this little hook, and then it goes around, 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 and comes out here. So the good news is it's on the outside. So I've got my magnifiers on and I've gone all around here and I've looked at various places. This was like a little bit of wax or something that was on here. So I investigated that. I couldn't see anything. So what I've done, and I think Dawn may have shown us how to do this once. Or maybe it was All-American uh, 5. I don't remember. It's been so long. But anyway, I've got this hooked up to here, which goes to the top. Now, one of the first things I did, of course, was verify that from here to here that has continuity because that's where people would really be messing with it you know by soldering and stuff like that so you know from here and then also sorry here you can see where I dug through and verified that it had continuity from here to here so it assured me that the problem was here in the coil so I found various little bumps and things but one of them had a little bit of green to it now it's hard to see now because I've been poking at it but it was here. And I thought I could feel something with my finger. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is hold this steady. And what I've got is I've got a needle here. And what I've done, and you can see where I was digging around here, just kind of following along, not pushing in, although I could try that, but just kind of dragging it between the two to clear out to see if there's anything grabbing. And so when I got into here, Now keep in mind, this is on the opposite side of the coil from where this is, right? So that means from here through to here I have continuity, but from here to here I don't. Okay, so the problem is in here, I think. So I'm going to dig and see if I can find where the break is, but I think it's either in here or between here and there so I want to keep looking for it and then when I find it we will be able to fix this I think so hang on okay guys here's a picture I took of Jupiter actually no this is uh, the best I could do on a photograph showing the break I'll put a circle around it and so that's where the break is uh, I tried to video pulling the lead up and demonstrating where it is but of course you know you turn turn off your video camera when you meant to turn it on so that's how that worked out but anyway I was able to take those two points right there and pull them out so I could uh, hook them back together and let's see how that works out right so here we go we got our coil back and uh, it's right in here uh, it took about three hours to do this. Yeah, I got some kept on tape on there to hold the the patch down. So you can kind of see it there. And we got continuity. So let's put this thing back in the radio and uh, get back to where we were, huh?
Okay. Now let's get it connected up. It's tempting to go ahead and do this while I got it out, but I want to see if it works first. All right. Okay, let me back you up and then we'll get the power up. Okay, so let's see how the repair on the coil works. Voltage down, power can up, 20 volts. Okay, it's working. Let me check that plate voltage now. I think if the tubes are warming up, it's starting to come in a little stronger. Oh, i got to be careful what's going on here. Okay. So here's the plate that was 230. This one now. There we go. That was at 1.2 volts. Now we're at 230 volts. So we got that tube back. Excellent. That looks much better. Now we got more range on the volume control, actually. I haven't cleaned it. Great. Great, we found out a problem. Then we get, uh, that, that helped. We got all the voltages back. We got all the tubes working. I'll get back on to doing this. Excellent. Okay, so I've finished replacing all the capacitors that I'm going to replace. The only one I haven't done is there's a mica capacitor up here in the uh, front end. Uh, all the other paper caps uh, that were either exposed or out here have been replaced. Uh, the big filter capacitor has been changed out. Um, there was some capacitors that were put in by some person uh, in the past. I don't know, you know where these came from or how old they are or whatever but I've replaced them as well um, and the unit's playing very well as you can hear so I've completed all of this uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I've got to uh, do a couple of things one of them is you hear a bit of hum that hum is actually the laminations of the transformer remember the transformer is not really bolted together well on the E and I plates or it can vibrate we'll get around to that some other day when I work on that transformer um, but other than that, it's quiet. You don't hear a hum from the speaker, really. Okay, so the other problem I have is that the tuning mechanism, the knob where it connects, is come disconnected. So I need to work on that a little bit. But in terms of picking up stations, not only the blocking out the heat part of it. I mean, I've just got a short wire around the ceiling, and uh, it's picking up pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down uh, and then maybe experiment a little bit with some of the trimmer capacitors to see if anything that makes a difference. Uh, I'm going to check a few voltages I won't bother you with but uh, I'll go through and make sure I know what they are before I lay this down. But uh, yeah I mean that's uh, that's pretty much it. I guess I'll probably spray the volume control while I have it up. Anyway uh, I'll, do, I'll do all that and then lay this down and then we'll come back and take a look. Okay it's a couple of days later um, I've done some checking. I, I did uh, spray the volume control. I got it all taken care of. I had some concerns about the way it was behaving, but it was just because it was the way it's wired in. Uh, when I isolated the wires and then I put it on a meter with a, a sweep, it, it, it performed like it was supposed to. So the luckily the volume control is in good shape and it cleaned up pretty well. Um, the performance of this is actually, I think, beginning to deteriorate a little bit. And uh, so one of the things I can show you here is that uh, I think it's the tubes. No, I, well, I'm sure it's the tubes, but I can show you something here. I was noticing, I was looking at, you know, I've been looking at the plate current, uh, plate voltages, but I was looking at the uh, cathode voltage on a number of these. It's so like this one is about two volts. That's a little low. Uh, this one here is about two volts. That's a little low. This one here is not even a tenth of a volt, and it goes through a it goes through a cathode resistor. 
So there's no current really going through this tube to speak of. So I've pulled the tubes out and they're almost all just almost completely dead. Uh, and I know some folks think you pull tubes and check them first thing. I don't do that because if I think this thing's working well enough, then even if a tube is weak, it's able to help me get through diagnosis to make sure I can find and fix other things like that coil and so forth. Uh, or, you know, maybe I found something that is not easy to fix. Uh, then I usually deal with tubes last, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I've gone ahead and got some new tubes for this, uh, for the three RF tubes and the detector tube. The detector is extremely weak. Uh, this RF tube, I think, is com um, just almost completely dead. This one's actually very weak. This one that had the burned up coil and hasn't been working is actually fairly strong. <laughs> but uh, I replaced those anyway. But, you know, it's still pretty expensive to replace, you know, these four tubes. Uh, I, I, had to, I had to get a 71A because it was missing one. Uh, I did have an 80 in my own inventory. But, you know, if you're going to replace all the tubes on this, you know, you could be into $100 pretty easily. So that's why I like to fix everything else first before I go buy tubes to make sure that, um, you know, it's, it's going to be worth the money to go on from there. So anyway, uh, I've got the, uh, the tubes. Whether they're new old stock or poles, I can't really tell. I, I, they look like they're NOS. Um, I'm going to put these things in and we'll see how they do. And I'm thinking about just doing this one first, just for grins, to see what that does for that cathode current. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Also, before I forget yet again, I keep trying to remember to mention this. When the person before me had gone in and done some of these capacitor change outs uh, that, we were, that we were looking at earlier, up in here, uh, there was two large capacitor boxes that originally were in this radio that are no longer here. There was one that was bolted here and it stood up, you know, was stood up about like this looking at pictures. Okay, and another one that stood up right here. Okay, and I believe it's this one uh, covered these two capacitors and this big one was for the capacitor that was right here. Uh, so they had gone ahead and removed those. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to change out that tube. I'll see what it does. If it's anything interesting, I'll, I'll bring it up and show it to you. Otherwise, I'm going to change those four tubes out, and then we'll see how it does. I'm going to do this first RF tube first. It's actually the third RF that works as the detector. And you may have just heard we lost the signal there. Okay. This one's a GE. Looks nice. Okay. <laughs> this tube just measured just completely dead on this. Okay, let's pop this one in. We'll see what we got. See how much that helps put the tube shield back on. Wow, here it comes. Yeah, and if there has to be some, some. <laughs> I would say that made a big difference. <laughs> we get this shield back on. Wow. So we got our volume, didn't we? That's a, that's a very real moral issue as well as a free country. Awesome. By a police state. By the way, this is the first time... Nothing else. I'd had some problems with the knob. It, it was just, there's a disc that fits between two pressure wheels, and I just, I fixed that. I, I'm not going to make part of the video. Free state. Wow, we got volume now, guys. Great. I'm going to go ahead and change out these other tubes, but boy, that made a difference. Let me see what we have on uh, 
cathode current and cathode voltage. But the argument that we have to All right, up our one volt now, we're whereas before we were point zero one. If if it really were one or the other, yes, that's correct. But it isn't. These are looking better. The problems in the United States. I think these were supposed to be like six to eight volts, so we're pretty close. I'm not using a low impedance uh, meter on this. That's excellent. Okay, I'm going to uh, change out the rest of these tubes and I'll bring you back when I get that done. Okay, so that is with uh, these four tubes replaced. It's uh, working much, much better. The uh, radio seems to be performing really, really well. So I'm going to let it play for a while, make sure everything's okay, and then uh, when we come back, we'll go back and we'll do the uh, we'll look at the top and we'll look at doing the alignment. Okay, so we're ready to do the alignment on this, or as they would call in the uh, instructions for this, adjusting the compensating capacitors, and they're here. Okay, so there's one for each stage of this. The instructions say to set the tuning condenser for 140, which is uh, 1.4 megahertz, and then to set the frequency generator, which you can't see up here, at 1400 megahertz. So I, uh, so 1400 uh, kilohertz, that is. So I got that uh, tuned in, and I, Turn on the uh, oscillate the the uh, modulation until I then tune this to where I was picking it up maximum. So I'm going to turn that on. And you can hear the signal coming through. You can see my hand is like causing the effects. So I'm about right on it there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust these, and it says you want to start with the one that's closest to the detector and then work your way towards the antenna uh, in terms of which RF stage. So it's kind of backwards looking if you remember. This is where the antenna comes in, but as you can see I'm hooked up just through a, a loop. But what it does is it, it comes from here and then the antenna comes up to the front, and then it goes here, and then it goes here, and then this last one is the one that's closest to the detector and it comes out from there. All right, so the antenna comes here comes to here, then here, then here. So this is the one you want to start with, is this one, and then work our way towards this one. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one, and we're just going to tune it for maximum reception. I have create. I made I made this myself. you got to have one that's not metal, because metal won't work right. If you go in here with metal, it affects it. So you really kind of want, that's maybe in my hand, but you want to go in with one that's plastic. So go in here like this and just tune it for maximum noise or a signal. Here we got a peak. Tune that for the peak. And go to the next one. Okay, we went past the peak. I'm going to turn down the signal strength. It doesn't have an automatic volume control, but just so it's easier to tolerate. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll go to this one. Here it go through the peak. Okay, and I just repeat it. 
Wow. Turn it down again. So you get the idea. I'm going to go through that several times and just kind of fine tune it. But for right now, that's pretty good. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to do is uh, open up the garage door so we get less interference, so I can get some signal in, and we'll see how this does. Hang on. Okay, we'll see if we're getting the signal anywhere. You know what? I don't even have the antenna connected. Hang on a second. Turn the volume down. Attach the antenna. I saw the noise in my shop. There you go, guys. A 93-year-old TRF set. Uh, I think that, you know, it's fixed in terms of we got it, you know, performing. I got it all aligned. Uh, it's, it's performing really, really well, as you can hear. I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, but we're not done with this. Uh, we clearly can't leave this like this. We, we, we can't just go plug this into the house. <laughs> So we got to do something about this. We got to do something about being able to close this off. I've got to do something about this. I need to do something about this. Um, we'll see what all we do and how much we need to do. Uh, of course, we got the power cord, the mister, fuse. Don't forget the fuse. And uh, so we got we got a lot more to go on this. Uh, but in terms of getting the radio, as I mentioned, fixed, we've gotten there. That's uh, that's that's really fantastic. And now it's worth the time to go in and and work on all these other elements that we need to do. So anyway, uh, get around to doing that uh, when I get around to it. But in the meanwhile, I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging in and watching this uh, this project unfold. It's been really interesting to work on a, a 1930 TRF type radio. It's not a super heterodyne. And uh, it's uh, it's been it's been really interesting. So thanks again for watching all the kind comments and so forth. Hey, I really appreciate it. See you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.